Good morning again, Year 10. Welcome to your um, live stream lesson. Hello again. Um, what I thought I would do, because yesterday's video was so long, I thought I would split today's into two separate videos. So this first one is your starter task on anaspectacles. Um, and then I'll do a second video for you with the main part of the lesson on nonfiction. So let's crack on with your revision for anaspectacles. So I've put here, get your revision cards ready. So we do need to make sure that you are making notes on this as we go. Don't just watch this and expect um, everything to magically fall into place. You do need to be making revision cards. So just like we did yesterday, we're going to look at <clears throat> another character. We're just looking at the stage directions and you need to figure out who this character is. So let's just read through these stage directions one at a time. The first one says amused. This person, when he or she is speaking to Mr. Burling about Eric, they are amused. Uh, when they are speaking to Eric, they speak lightly, a light tone of voice. Uh, when they speak to the inspector, first of all, they are startled. Uh, when they speak to Sheila, they are trying to smile. Uh, when they speak to the inspector again, they are distressed. And then when they speak to the inspector again, they speak steadily. So a kind of change of tone there. Uh, speaking to Sheila, um, hesitatingly. Speaking to Mr. Burling, decisively. And at the end, uh, this person actually shares this stage direction, smiling, with someone else. <clears throat> now, you can probably use the process of elimination to work out who this is, if you can't think who might be Amused, startled, distressed, and decisive. Have you worked it out? Of course, everyone's favourite lad about town, everyone's favourite aristocrat, Gerald Croft. Well done, if you got that. So we're going to look at these, um, I think we're just going to look at five of these in more detail. So we're going to consider the stage directions and what those stage directions actually tell us about the character of Gerald. So with your revision card, okay, you're going to write Gerald Croft on one side, flip it over, and then you're going to write down just these one or two word quotes with a bit of annotation as to what they mean. So starting off with amused, okay, Gerald shares in Mr. Burling's amusement regarding Eric. Why do you think Gerald needs to create a quick alliance with Berlin. So basically, Gerald and Mr. Berling are chatting about Eric and they're having a bit of a laugh. They're giggling, they're sniggering. They are perhaps not being particularly kind. They're laughing at Eric. Why might Gerald want to be sycophantic like that with Mr. Berling? Think about who Gerald is about to marry. Think about Croft Limited and Berling and Company, those two businesses. Why is it in Gerald's interest to get Mr. Burling on side? You know the answer. Okay, uh, trying to smile. Love this bit. What does this action tell you about Gerald's motives here? Why do you think he fights for Sheila, even though we know that he took Daisy as his mistress? Okay, so this is at the point where Sheila has said, you fool, he knows we don't know how much he knows yet. Um, and she's realised um, that the inspector knows everything about it. But um, Gerald is still trying to smile his way out of trouble, isn't he? He still thinks he can have Sheila. So why does he think that? Is it because of his social class? Is it because of his social standing, his status? Is it because of the fact that um, in 1912, Women expected their boyfriends to have affairs before they got married? I don't know. Draw it out to the bigger picture. Think about politics, gender, all those bigger questions that we're looking at in terms of themes. Why does he fight for Sheila? Because he thinks he can still have her. Don't forget, at the end of the play, um, they're sort of saying, Sheila, you better give that ring back to Gerald now, hadn't you? And they all think that she should just get over it. Okay, right, these two stage directions here. Gerald talks to the inspector in a distressed way, and then he speaks steadily. 
what do these two things suggest about his character? So I think he's distressed when he um, realises oh, it's not just some shop girl that died, it was my Daisy Renton. He's distressed at the realisation that it is Daisy. And then when he gathers himself and he comes back to being, you know, the sort of upper middle class chap who knows what's what, he becomes very steady in his speech again because, you know, men probably shouldn't be seen to be too emotional that's how women behave, right? Um, so what does this tell us about him? Did he let his guard down when he became distressed? We know that he likes to be the hero, doesn't he? So when he was distressed, was that the real Gerald? And then he pulls himself together and he speaks steadily. Is that him assuming his role again as, as an upper class sort of hero of the hour? That's interesting. OK, decisively, by the end of the play, Gerald is decisive once more. What does this imply about his character? How does the way he speaks segregate him from the younger generation? He's separating himself, isn't he, from Sheila and from Eric. OK, he is siding with Mr. Burling again. He's being decisive. OK, he's being that. Do you remember Eric, half shy, half assertive? Not Gerald. Gerald is 100% assertive. And I think he becomes himself again at the end of the play, particularly when he is the one who announces um, that the inspector was a fraud and not a real policeman at all. I think he's very pleased to have been the fairy tale prince once more and rescuing everyone. Last stage direction. He actually shares this stage direction with Mrs. Burling. They're both smiling, smugly. Smug, I think, is the right word. Um, why? Is it, again, is it to segregate himself from the younger generation? Is it so that he can align himself with the people that he believes are the ones with power? We as an audience, Mr Priestley, J.B. Priestley, and us believe, actually, no, the ones with the power are the socialists. And actually, Gerald and Mr. and Mrs. Burling are simply wrong. So those are the one, two, three, four, five notes I'd like you to make on the back of that revision card. I'll leave that on the screen while I say goodbye, and I'll be back very soon with your second video. Thanks for watching.